Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. We're going to take a horrible, washed out, hazy image like this, and with Luminar, we're going to transform it into a beautiful image like this. We're going to be working on this image. Now, obviously, this is a horrible image. I shot it at high noon. Um, it was about 100 degrees out, and there was a ton of haze in the air. So you could see that, you know, there's the colors are all washed out. There's really no contrast. But I chose this image because the filters are so powerful in Luminar. You'll see we'll be able to make a beautiful image out of this shot. Now, um, Personally, I like to crop early in my workflow. I've mentioned that many times. And you can see it's slightly crooked. So I'm going to go to the Crop tool right away. I'm going to go up to Tools and go to Crop. And I really just want to straighten it. So I'm going to keep the original aspect ratio. I'm going to go just outside the image to the right. And you can see the cursor turned into that double arrow. And I'm just going to click with my left mouse button, hold it in, and just drag the image a little straighter. And I think that eyeball and it looks pretty good and I'm going to click done. Now the way I typically like to process an image is I look and see what's the screaming problem and to me the screaming problem with this image is it's really hazy. So I want to get rid of that right away. So I'm going to go to add filter and I'm going to go to issue fixers dehaze and I'm going to go right there. I'll close the filters down and I'm going to go to the amount and I'm just going to push that up. So I, I've pushed that up just to get rid of the haze and there still is a little bit of haze, but we'll deal with that as we go. So I got rid of the haze. That was the main issue that was bothering me. I'm going to go to Add Filter, and I'm going to go now to the Raw Develop Filter. Uh, if you're not working on a raw file, this will just be said or called Develop. And you'll notice when I choose this, it's going to go right to the top. It always is the first filter at the very top. Even though I used dehaze ahead of time, it's still putting this one first. So I'm going to start right at the top, and I'm going to stay with the Luminar default profile. I'm not going to use any of the others, at least for this image. Um, the white balance is off. Uh, it's just, it was shot with a, a long exposure using an ND filter. And by the way, uh, list all the gear I used, um, the exposure settings, the camera settings will all be in the description below this video, so you could check that out. And also, I forgot to add real quick, is today Skylum Software announced that they're going to be coming out with Luminar 4 in the fall. And they're having a huge pre-sale where you could save a ton of money. And I'll have all that info in the description below the video as well. So I want to get um, a better white balance on this image. So I'm going to use the eyedropper and just click on that. So now my cursor is an eyedropper with that target on there and the slate wall is you know like gray slate so that's a nice neutral color so i'm going to click on that and you can see it warm the image up a touch and that's really more accurate uh what i saw that day when i was there now again what's kind of screaming out to me well it's still kind of hazy uh contrast will help you get rid of haze uh, so i'm going to turn contrast up and you can see it's getting better isn't it so uh, let's uh, bring in highlights a little bit. We have a lot of issues with this image. The whole right side is brighter than the left side. So I want to kind of equalize that a little bit. So I'm going to bring highlights down and I'm going to open shadows up. So it's kind of flattening it out again, but that's all right. I'm going to get some of that contrast back with some of these things I'm going to be doing in a moment. I'm going to get a white and black point first. Now what I'm going to do is hold the Alt or Option key. It's Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac and click on the whites slider. Now, as far as I know, this still only works for Mac computers. If you have a Windows computer, this won't work. Now, as you can see when I do that, we have a black screen, but we have some blue coming through. That means I'm clipping the blue channel. We have a red, green, and blue channel. And we're clipping a little bit of green over here, it looks like. Um, typically, I don't like to clip any of the channels on the white because I prefer them not to clip because I want details in the highlights. So I would pull this down 
until I could minimize that. You can see I can't totally eliminate it in this image, but I pulled it down. Similarly, I'll hold that Alt or Option key, click on the blacks. Now we have a white screen. I'm going to pull this down until I get some colors are bleeding through, and you can see I'm not getting any. So this is a very unusual white and black point. Uh, you can see I have both whites and blacks all the way down. To me, that's, you know, as close as I could get it with the raw develop filter. Now we're going to be working a little bit more with this. Uh, so, so far, so good. Now I'm going to go to lens and I'm going to click lens distortion, chromatic aberration and defringe. I'll just click all those. I don't have to do anything with transform. So I'm done with the raw develop filter for now. I may come back in here and readjust some things, but for now I think it's okay. So I'm going to go to add filter and I still want to work on the contrast a little bit. And I really like using curves and that's down here in the professional uh, section. So I'm going to go down there and I'll close down the filters catalog and I'm going to do, I'm going to, you know, work on it to try to bring out a little more contrast in the image. So I'm going to put three points on it right here, right in the middle across this middle box. Then I'm going to go down here in the lower left. And if you're not familiar with curves, what this indicates is all the shadows are down here in the lower left and the highlights are in the upper right and all the midtones are between it. If you push up in any part of the curve, you're taking those tones and you're making them brighter. If you pull down, you're making them darker. So I want to go down here where the shadows are and I want to make the shadows even darker because I pulled blacks all the way down and it still wasn't dark enough. So I want to go down here and I want to pull those down a little bit. Now similarly, I'm going to go to the highlights and I could pull those down a little bit too. So I'm kind of making my white and black point a little better with curves, if that makes any sense. All right, so I did that. Now, as I look at it too, we still have this brighter area on the right and darker area on the light, uh, left. And I want to kind of equalize that a little bit. So I'm going to go to Add Filter and I'm going to go to the top bottom lighting. So I'm going to go there. This is actually just a, a graduated filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set orientation by clicking on that button. And you can see that we have our graduated filter kind of uh, overlay on here. And I'm going to come out the middle and you can see we turn into that double arrow. So I could kind of twist this. And I'm making the top over here. And I'm making the bottom over here. So the top now, if I want to make it darker, I move this to left. And if I want to make the bottom brighter, I move this to the right. So I kind of equalize it a little. It still isn't perfect, but I mean, that to me is a little better. It's looking a little better. Um, I could always come back up here now and I could open up shadows. more. Maybe bring highlights down a little more. All right, so, so far so good. This is a really difficult image to work on. Um, part of the reason why I chose it. So I'm gonna kind of just minimize these tabs. It doesn't turn them off. I'm just minimizing it so we have more room on the right and you can see what I'm doing. Now, it's kind of still washed out because it was so hazy. Um, there's really not a lot of color. So I wanna do something with that. So I'm gonna go to saturation and vibrance. And oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to turn that overlay off. And to do that, just click on set orientation again. So I have that graduated filter overlay or the top bottom lighting overlay turned off. Now, uh, I'm going to go to saturation and turn that up and see what happens. Oh, I like that. It doesn't look too bad. But I'm going to reset it. And then I'm going to go to vibrance and turn that up and see which one I like better. Vibrance seems to be making the water and the shadow side a little more cooler than I like compared to the saturation. So we'll go with saturation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push it up relatively high. So that's pretty good. Now one thing I didn't really deal with here is um, noise. And I'm gonna zoom in by just clicking with the, um, the magnifier. Oops, didn't wanna do that. Zoom in, there we go. And let it render. And I'm gonna look, I don't think there's a lot of noise. This was shot at a pretty low ISO. And there really isn't any noise, so I really don't have to worry about that. Now, I'm still not quite happy uh, with 
the color temperature. I think it's just off. So I'm going to go back up to the raw develop. I'm going to get this eyedropper again. I'm going to again click on this gray wall. Yeah, that's a little better. That's more like I remember it. So I think that looks much better. Um, and let's see, we're going to go to add filter and um, where is it? There's foliage enhancer. I want to try that. I'm just going to go close this down. I'm just going to go to the amount. I'll pull that up. Let's kind of make that foliage a little more hue more towards yellow. I think that looks good right there. So, so far, so good. We'll go to add filter again, and I think we'll do some sharpening, just regular sharpening on this one. Now, I didn't really have to do any noise reduction. Uh, I am going to zoom in, and we'll go to the amount. Bring that up to around 25. Hopefully, you can see that in the video. It really did a nice job. Made it nice and crisp. Uh, I think the other sliders by default are fine. And I think I'm pretty much done, to tell you the truth. So I'm going to go to the vignette. And I'm going to use the post crop vignette, of course. I'm going to move it to the left and make a darker vignette. I don't think I, I don't like those really strong vignettes. I just want it slightly. Slightly. Now to place center, I'm just going to try something. I'm just going to have it offset to the left. So th it puts more of the vignette on the right hand side. Uh, just like that and just see now I'm going to turn this off by clicking on the little eye and then turn it on yeah I think that helps balance it a little better uh, in my opinion so um, I would say that that might be done there is before and there is after before after now, if it's still, if you still want a little, more, like if the haze is bothering you, you could still add a second dehaze filter. So you could add more than one of these filters. Um, also, um, contrast will always help with dehaze. So any um, filter that has contrast in it, or even in the raw develop, if you want to go to the contrast slider and move that up even more, that will help eliminate uh, some of that haze as well. So, again, that's why I picked this image, because really, look at it. I mean, who thought we could make a nice-looking image out of that? Um, so, um, the power of Luminar. And I think Luminar really shines with uh, landscape photos, cityscape, and nightscape as well. Uh, that is really the strength of this application. Uh, again, I did this in Luminar 3. Um, it also will do the same tools in Luminar Flex. And I'm pretty sure any version of Luminar uh, should work. Uh, with the raw develop, it's going to be a little different in the earlier versions of Luminar. Uh, but other than that, I think everything else is the same. So um, hopefully that helps you uh, process those really tough landscape images. And I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. Remember, check the description below the video for all that camera ex and exposure info and that deal they're having on Luminar. Four. Thank you. I'll talk to you guys soon.